Okay, so uh, what we have right now is classwork from class 9, uh, where we learn to do a lot of d3.nest stuff uh, that we use to draw lines, paths, and also small multiples. So when you have a lot of little charts as opposed to just one big complicated chart. But we are going to start with one big complicated chart. We have one right here. It is temperatures over the course of different months of the year, average high temperatures, I believe. Uh, it comes from this file, alltemps.csv. So we have a series of different cities, and every single data point is a month, a high temperature, and a low temperature. So we have here is, let's say, the line for New York City as it goes throughout the year, and then each one of these would be a line for every other city. The thing is, though, right now we just have a bunch of circles and we want to draw lines through them. Uh, so what we have to do is figure out how to put this data, uh, instead of having it be a bunch of dots, be a bunch of lines. So if we look at how the circles get drawn, um, what we're doing is saying, okay, find everything with a class of temp circle. Uh, attach data to that, and for anything that is missing a visual representation, add a circle. So when we uh, pop into this SVG, uh, we do not have anything with the class of temp circle. So then D3 goes along, and for every single one of our data points, every single one of these, every 72 of our data points, it will add a circle. Um, we then give it a class, we then give it a size, and then we position it on the page. So every single one of our rows here ends up being one circle. This is the magic of select all, data, enter, append. The point of select all, data, enter, append is for every single data point that you have, you end up getting one thing on the page. So we want to have 72 dots here, so we do select all, data, enter, append. Now, what we are here to do, though, is we're here to draw lines. How many lines do we want? This is the question that you always have to ask yourself. How many do you want? Uh, whether you're adding circles, whether you're adding lines, whether you're adding whatever. Uh, if we look at all temps.csv, we have one city, two cities, three, four, five, six different cities. So we want six different lines. We want six lines. Now, the issue is here, if we do select all, data, enter, append for our lines, which are going to be paths, of course. That is going to put 72 different lines on the page. We don't want 72 different lines on the page, so we can't use, we think, <clears throat> select all, data, enter, append. The other way that we know how to add lines is SVG append path <clears throat> datum data points. So what this would do is it would take our SVG and it would say add one path, so one line to the page, and then attach all of our data points to it. This is not what we want to do, but I'm going to walk us through what happens if we do this because it's an error that you're going to see happen a lot. Um, what we need to do now is give it a D. Usually we have a variable called line, which is a line generator from D3. Uh, we did not create it yet, so we have an X position scale, we have a Y position scale. We need to get the thing that will convert all of these data points, all of these months and high temperatures, into something that will go through this. So, do I have any lines on here? No. So I can't show you what that looks like but it's a lot of crazy text inside of the D attribute. So what we need to do is we need to say, hey D3, um, we want something called line. And when you do this, when you make one of these line generators, you have to give it two things. Uh, you have to give it the, uh, you have to give it the way to calculate the X and the way to calculate the Y position. Now, the best way to do this is think about, okay, we, on our x-axis, we are using our x-axis or x-position scale, so this x-position scale right here, uh, and what column are we interested in? So we have a column called month, 
and the column for month is going to be going along the x-axis, so it is x position scale d dot month. The way to double check with yourself is to just scroll down if you already have uh, circles added there, and this is going to be the exact same as what goes into your line generator. So the same way that you would put circles onto this page, you are going to do the line generator. Now the one difference is these circles here are actual circles that are on the page. This is a circle, this is a circle, this is a circle, this is a circle. So they get ATTRCX, ATTRCY. What we are trying to do though is explain to D3 how do you actually draw this line? We are not saying we have a line and we want to set X and Y on it. We are saying, in theory, there's a thing called a line and here's where you would give it its X and its Y. So it's not dot ATTR for the line generator, it's always dot X and dot Y. So what we wanna see is when we had our circle, it used x position or y position scale d dot high in order to set its y position, and we can actually just steal that. So we're gonna say x position scale d month, y position scale d high, and this is gonna draw a line. Well, it's not gonna draw a line, we'll see what happens. We get this horrible, ugly thing. If you get this horrible, ugly thing, it's because when we use a path, a path actually fills everything in by default. Um, so it draws these lines, but then it colors on the inside. So anytime you want to draw a line like this, ATTR uh, fill none, ATTR stroke black save. And there we go. We get a wonderful series of lines, but the problem is, let's say this line here goes over here, and then it finishes, but then it draws a line back. And then this line goes through and it draws a line back. And then this line goes through and it draws a line back. That's because we have only added one path to this page. So as a result of only having added one path to this page, instead of getting a series of different lines for each and every city, we just get one long, long, long line that goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So what we want to do is we want to say, hey, we don't want only one line. We don't want 72 lines. What we want is six lines. And the way that you do that is you group your data together. We're going to say, hey, D3, I know I have 72 different measurements here, but I would like for you to group them together by city. So this will be a group. This will be a group. This will be a group and so on. So we'll end up with six different groups. The way we do that is using d3.nest. Now d3.nest, uh, it's not group, even though I talk about it a lot in terms of groups. I always call this variable nested anytime I put things in different groups, just to help remind you that d3.nest is what you are going to be using. So when you use d3.nest, you wanna say, what is the column that I'm going to group on? And just like everything else with D3, it's either function D or the fat arrow. Uh, the column name is city. So when you do dot key, you don't get to just say group based on city. It doesn't work like that. We have to say D fat arrow D dot city is what you're gonna be grouping on. And then we say, here is all the different data that uh, you're gonna be grouping together. So this is going to give us six different groups. I'd like to think I can console.log nested, save, refresh, and sure enough, uh, chart1.js, line 51, which is chart1.js, line 51, this gives us an array of six things. So we have put these into groups. So we now have a list of six different things we don't care what's in them, we just know we have six of them. So now, now that we have six of them, we can use select all data, enter append. And instead of this one, which because it uses data points, it put 72 different circles on the page. Um, if we use 
nested. Nested only has six elements in it, so it will only add six paths to the page. So we're going to comment this out, and we're going to say SVG, select all, uh, and I'll call it temp path. Uh, I could probably just use path here, but it's just good practice to start using classes for these things. Uh, data, nested, enter, append, path. So what this is going to do is it's going to say, hey, find everything with a class of temp path. Nothing has a class of temp path. Attach nested data to that, so those six different groups we have. And then for each one of those groups, add a path to the page. So I'm going to save and refresh. And we don't see anything here, but if I inspect and we open this up, we can see that now, yes, we do have six different paths here. So each one of these is going to be one of those lines going through. And we need to give it a few things. Um, we're going to need to give it an ATTRD, and we're going to fix up its fill and its stroke. So ATTRD. Last time, we could say line. We can't say line here, because remember, any time you want every single circle to be the same, or every path to be the same, or every line to be the same, you use ATTR, and then you just put a variable here, or a string, or a number, or something like that. So every single one of these paths will be black. Every single one of these paths will have no fill. The reason why we did that is because this was only one path. Because we said, hey, SVG, only add one path. Whereas down here, <clears throat> when we had our circles, we say, hey, SVG, add a billion circles, 72 circles, one for every single data point. And then because they're each going to have a separate CX and CY, I would like for you to use function D here. So in order to survive this, in order to say, hey, we want every one of these to have a different shape, we are going to have to do function D. <clears throat> The confusing part here, though, is we've only ever done ATTRD line. So you give line, I guess, a bunch of data points, but what is D actually? We're going to console.log it. We're going to look at it. <clears throat> Every time you nest data together in D3, anytime you group it like this, it stops being a list of data. So you don't just get, you know, every single one of these cities has 12 months of data. When you group it, you don't just get a list of lists. You get a list of dictionaries. And every dictionary has two things in it. It has a key, which is the name of the group. And then it has values, which is everything that's actually in the group. So this is the first line, second line, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth lines. So any time you do dot data nested, and then you want to change something based on that data, and you're either going to be using the key or you're going to be using the values. So it's either going to be d.key or d.values. So in this case, what we want to do is we're going to say, hey, D3, you have this line generator, this line generator which takes a bunch of data and turns it into the shape of a line. So we are going to say, d.values, because d.key isn't going to give us anything. Saying give us the line for New York City, totally useless. But if we say give us the key, or give us the line for all of these data points, it will then say, okay, I'm gonna look at these data points, they all have a month, they all have a high, that month, that high, pick the X, pick the Y. Save it, refresh, Oh no, we're back in that ugly, terrible land where everything is covered in black. Uh, let's go back and change our fill and stroke. Save it. And there we go. We have a beautiful set of lines. So we started by pulling in 72 different data points. And instead of 72 lines, we actually needed to put these into different groups. And for every single group, we needed a line. The way to do that is first, you group everything together using d3.nest. So you end up with six different groups for six different lines. 
And then just like we've always done, select all data, enter, append. That will draw one visual thing for each one of our groups. So because we had six groups, it ended up drawing six paths.